Are you a victim of low clearance with your shock mount? Are you dragging that every time you go off road? Are your friends spotting you telling you, hey, you're on your shock mount, you're stuck on your shock mount, back up. Let's not continue down that road. Let's modify your Jeep to its fullest performance. Let's go into the video. What's going on guys? Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets. And it's a beautiful day. Finally getting around to do a project that I've been meaning to do for a while on the Jeep. Um, but I want to say if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, smash that red button so you can uh, you know, stay up to date with all the install videos and all the other Jeep videos I'm doing. I am installing the Synergy shock mount relocation brackets. I'm gonna dial, I'll talk about why I'm doing it and I'll do a full install video. But if you haven't noticed already, your rear shock brackets are extremely low. They're actually one of the lowest points on your vehicle. Um, off-roading, they're gonna get caught up a lot. Because, I mean, you're trying to move around big rocks and objects. Your diff is gonna be in the center, so you're gonna to try to move the diff offset so you're not hitting your diff on a rock. But then on each side of the diff, you have those super low shock brackets. All right, so we're under the Jeep here, and as you can see, the rear diff hangs down a little low, but then you also have your shock brackets, which hang down even lower. And as you can tell, this bracket has taken a beating, both sides, um, constantly dragging them, you know, just rocks are hitting them, getting hung up, hung up on them, and nobody likes that. I've even bent this shock. I mean, you can see that the shaft is bent just because it hangs down so low. I think on this, the time I bent it, I backed into a boulder, little rock right there. But nobody likes being hung up on their shock mount. Um, I'm not the only jeeper. A lot of jeepers worldwide are suffering from this issue. So I'm here to help you. James from Jeeping Adventure, and I am a victim of dragging my shock mounts over rocks and obstacles. Ben always getting stuck on his shock mounts. Just just choose an easier line. Like I don't understand. I, I under you're the detonator. I get it. I get it. But choose a different fucking line. Really? Do you have to go, oh, I'm, I'm Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets, so I gotta go big or go up. No! No! I don't wanna spot you anymore. Sorry, not sorry, bro. Pick a, pick an easier line. Figure that, figure it out. Figure it out. That's all I'm saying. You get stuck, then I, ha then I get stuck. I, I can't, I just gotta stand there in the heat? No! No, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Nope. You're choosing an easier line from now on or else I'm not recording you anymore and I want my GoPros back. So what are these brackets actually going to do? Well, what we're going to do is cut off a few brackets on the stock mount. And with this Synergy bracket, you actually have a few different locations of mounting it. Uh, because it has three holes, you can mount either higher or a little bit lower. Uh, so it gives you some adjustability. And then once we mount it, we're gonna be able to cut off all that excess. But before you go ahead and do this, you're gonna have to make sure that you're comfortable with cutting this off. Another thing that you're gonna have to look out for, since we're raising this lower mounting location up, we are gonna have less shock travel. So a couple options, either add more bump stops so your shock isn't compressing or get a different shock. Um, another option, Synergy also sells a, uh, a bracket that raises this top mounting location up even higher. So what that does is if you suppose you take two inches up here, it adds two inches up there. So you can keep your same, same shock and keep your same bump stop and travel length. Um, fortunately for me, I'm currently running a two inch drop up here for my shock just to get more down travel. So after I add these brackets and take that off, I'll still be in the exact same setup. All right, so we got everything right here laid out on the table. Came in a small little box. Uh, we got our two brackets, came with two stickers, hardware and instructions. Uh, I bought it from offroadelements.com, great price, great people, and it got here quick. So uh, I'm gonna put the link to these in the description. All right, so I'm not gonna keep talking on and on about the benefits of these. Everybody knows you get more ground clearance, more ground clearance, the better. Um, so we're gonna dive into the install. This is not a complete bolt-on mod. I mean, it, it is, you don't have to, freaking make anything but we are gonna have to cut those shock mounts on the axle so we're gonna need a grinder sawzall cut off wheel blah 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 in order to uh, cut those old tabs off and then cut it flush um, so I mean it's not hard by any means 
but you know for certain people that don't have those tools super easy i mean you can go to harbor freight and buy them or just borrow them from a friend um installing these is not bad so that's enough let's go ahead and dive right in and uh start chopping and gain some more clearance all right so the first step we're going to take our shock off at the lower mount as well as our sway bar link So if this says anything at all, I mean, you can see that the bolt head, half of it's like completely shaven off from rubbing on the rocks. All right, so our next step is to grab our grinder and cut off wheels and actually cut off the shock bracket and grind it down smooth. All right, so what we're gonna be cutting Starting off right now is just this actual bracket where the shock was mounted to. Nothing else, and we are not going to cut off our sway bar tab. Just cutting the factory welds right off that. All right, so before you start grinding, just go ahead and pull the shock off because before it's hanging in the way, go ahead and ditch the shock and start grinding. All right, for a real quick tip, easiest way to get these off uh, from what I'm seeing now without removing the tire and jacking it up is to cut from the bottom along here then go in and cut the bracket at this angle then get your hammer hammer this over and we're gonna have more access to cut here and here what I was running into is just the angle with the grinder couldn't get that cut over there uh, so just cutting them in half is gonna give you more room to cut the actual welds. All right, so as you can tell, the brackets have been cut off. Uh, don't worry about really cleaning up these areas uh, because that we're gonna be chopping that off. You're just gonna to wanna to grind down the weld that was here and right here. We're gonna grab a measuring tape and measure from our bump stop here to our bump stop contact point on the axle. Uh, we're gonna get that measurement so we know how high to mount this. Uh, so you can either mount it here for ultra high clearance or drop it down a little bit for more shock length. Um, but like I said, we're gonna grab that measurement and then mock up our shock setup to see if we're gonna need to add a bump stop or mess around with this mounting location. All right, so I went ahead and measured the bump stop uh, travel path and it's five and three quarters. So now with the shock mount met, mocked up, I'm just holding it in its location up on the uh, on the frame. I'm gonna grab my measuring tape. Sorry, trying to do all this one-handed is not easy. And I'm simply gonna measure from right here in this eye where the where the shock would mount to the body of the shock. And rough reading is seven and a half inches. So what that means is I have seven and a half inches of up travel before it bottoms out. Since my bump stop to you know, bump pad is five and three quarters, that is gonna hit before this shock does. So I can even move it up one more, uh, one more hole to get more clearance. And that's probably what I'll do because I'll also be able to get more down travel. Um, this is a super important step. In the directions, it, Synergy explains it. You know, you can cycle uh, cycle your travel to make sure everything's working. But if you find out that your bump bump travel, your bump stop travel is more than your shock travel, you're either gonna wanna get an extra bump stop to shorten that up, or the mount, the, the Synergy uh, bracket that I'm trying to show you, that goes up here. Let me throw this down. Um, I was talking about that earlier, but it actually, raises this mounting point on the shock up here uh, so you don't have to lose any of your up travel um, one thing that i will mention with that kit it does reloc relocate your uh, your sway bar back so it does not work with a stock muffler i'm pretty sure but that's a good excuse to do my uh my video that i made a while ago on my exhaust for under 100 bucks pretty cool mod but I don't need that. My shocks have pr plenty of travel left. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mount this 
all the way up and uh, go from there. All right, so since I figured out which position I'm gonna uh, mount this in permanently, I went ahead and put the bolt in uh, just loosely and I'm gonna grab my Sharpie to mark where I'm gonna cut this. Um, I can't go that high because I'm running the Terraflux track bar bracket, but I'm simply gonna make a line on the bottom here. It really doesn't have to be exact, just somewhere to uh, know where to cut. All right, so now that it's all cut, all painted, we're gonna grab our bracket and simply bolt it on. Um, comes with all the hardware you'll need. You're gonna bolt it with these two holes and put the sway bar back on and then throw a shock on and let's see uh, what it gained us. All right, so I went ahead and tightened up these uh, included bolts with a 9 uh, socket and I'm going through and installing the sway bar link. One thing I will say, putting this sway bar link on now sucks uh, because you really can't get your uh, socket with a ratchet up in there. So, uh, you know, a ratcheting wrench would be nice or just sit there and turn it with the uh, with your normal wrench. But definitely not as easy as before. Quick tip, I'm sure it's probably in the instructions, but as you know, we don't read instructions. Um, I'd recommend putting on the sway bar link bolt before doing this bottom bolt that way you can get a wrench up there and tighten your sway bar link a lot easier um one thing i would like to mention is that now the only things actually holding this bracket on is going to be these two bolts and your sway bar link so those of you with a welder it wouldn't be a bad idea to uh you know if after everything's been tested you know you've had it on for a few weeks and you've tested it off road it wouldn't be a bad idea just to hit a little weld right along this edge. I definitely had a little more room to cut up here. The reason I didn't do that is because once again, I'd rather have this bracket hit before the actual control arm down here. Um, if I cut any higher, the control arm would be the bottom and it would be skid on that. The shock's on and it's all buttoned up. Uh, I had to run inside, help put the girls down for bed. Uh, came back out here and let's finish up the video. Got one side done, ready to go. I still have to do the other side, but there's no point in uh, getting that on film because it's gonna be the exact same steps we took on that side. But since I got one side done and the other side's still stock, let's take a look at the measurements, do a before and after, and then uh, at the end, let's do some final thoughts of it. So this side is the before, and as you can tell, it's completely mangled with a clearance of 10 and a half inches. And we're gonna come over here to the side that we have completed. Fresh paint, fresh bracket, and a clearance of a little better than 12 inches. So we gained an inch and a half. I think my math's right there, 10 and a half. Uh, yeah, so an inch and a half, which doesn't sound like much, but that is a lot of clearance for off-road. Uh, you know, these, they hang down to the lowest point on your vehicle. Inch and a half is a lot when it comes to rocks and other obstacles. I'm sure you could go and shave off another quarter inch if you really wanted, but like I said, I don't want to be hitting my control arm the whole time. I'd much rather have it hit the bracket. It's installed, it looks good, and definitely a mod I'd recommend. Let me go ahead and get up. I'm fucking tired of laying on the ground. Um, you know, it it's a good mod, especially for those of you that actually do go off-road. Um, just because, like I said, it's a point that's really gonna get hung up a lot. Uh, you know, if you're watching this video and you do off-road, you've probably, you probably noticed it. I mean, there's a reason you're watching this video. Um, but yeah, install's not bad. You do have to grind, you do have to cut. Um, you know, going back to stock after this, it's kind of one of those things, like once you cut it and do it, you're really not going back to stock. Um, but it definitely a good upgrade and I'd recommend it to all you guys I'm gonna put a link in the description and probably in the comments so you guys can go check it out and like I said earlier I just want to mention it again you know really make sure that you're gonna have enough up travel if not you're gonna have to order the synergy kit uh, that comes with the upper relocation too and I'll put that in the description as well just make sure you read it get a full understanding of what you're doing before you buy this um, in my case I didn't need to um, but there's plenty of workarounds for it if you do have to get that upper kit 
But that's it for today. Uh, I'm probably gonna finish up that other side tonight. It's fucking humid out right now. Got a lot of other videos I need to do. A lot of them are pretty cool. Um, hopefully dropping in this week or next week. It's Memorial Day weekend, so I'll have some time to do some Jeep mods and uh, get caught up on all my videos. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And like always, if you have any video ideas or video requests, throw it in the comments. And you know, I'll try my best to do the video. Until then, subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, check out the others, and hopefully you have some fun projects that you can knock out and uh, stay busy with. All right, guys, it's been from JK Gear and Gadgets, and until the next time, thanks.